Yeah, All right, now let's move into some of the technical things that we're working on this section. A lot is happening in this opening section. Don't take for granted what we're doing here. This will be the foundation for many of the skill sets that we'll see as the piece continues, okay? So the technical things that you might run into as you begin to learn this piece. So in the left hand, we have a single independent with mallet one, followed by two double verticals in mallets one and two. Slow this down a little bit. You're trying to make this as fluid and flowing as you can. And not this. Most commonly, the technical things that I'll see are students that are not bending at the wrist, and they'll do the majority of the motion with their left arm, so it would look like this. See, I'm locking the left wrist here. We want to bend that left wrist. And you can do some of a, a motion like this. It's easier to just watch and copy than it is to necessarily break down and describe. But you can see that I'm kind of lifting on that third note in preparation of the first note of the next bar. And that also will make that third note feel a little bit lighter as we move into the downbeat of the next bar. So, bending the left wrist for the downbeat. So it's really just one motion, three notes for one motion. You know, you might liken this to a, a molar stroke when you're drumming, okay? So that's the left hand motion. Take some time and work out that skill set, okay? Now, the next thing I would do is, for me at this point, I would just read it and put the two hands together. If that's a challenge for you, you might break down just the right hand melody. These are single independence in mount three. One, two, three, 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 one. So we have E flat and D flat, neighbor notes, and then we have our first jump from E flat up to A flat. So you might have to practice that movement. Really, the left hand's on autopilot at that point, but you want to familiarize your hand. Hey, this is where E flat is, and... Oops, that's too high, that's B flat. That's where A flat is, right? So you wanna familiarize your right hand with where those notes are. And it's just stepwise coming down in this pentatonic scale. Right? The main takeaway that you should have from this, it's not just about playing the right notes. We're trying to create a phrase. What is the expressive phrase or the shape that we're trying to create for this section? That's the arrival point. Now, another thing you might notice as I'm playing this one, three, one figure, one, two, three, one, two, three, one. I keep them out moving on beats one and two, as opposed to freezing, three, freezing, three, freezing. That doesn't sound fluid and three, four lilt-like. It feels more disjointed and separated. This is disjointed, as opposed to fluid motion, Fluid motion, All right? So try to keep your mouths moving. Uh, you'll hear this phrase a lot. People will hear what they see. So if it looks fluid, looks flowing, then it'll sound more fluid and sound more flowing. Okay, so now you've worked out both hands and we're gonna put them together. If you're having trouble putting this together, the key is just to go slower or to do smaller chunks. Go slower or do smaller chunks. So for example, you have the two bar intro. We're gonna play the first bar together now, bar three. Right? And then you can just do that three or four times. Again. Now we can make a little exercise for us. We'll play two bars of the left hand accompaniment, focusing on the flow and the motion and the lilt, and then we'll add the right hand melody in. And then we'll just loop that A, B, A, B section. So it looks like this. Accompaniment, add the right hand. Back to just the left hand, add the melody back in. Back to just the left hand, right hand melody. 
One more. So we've just made up a little exercise for ourselves to get this coordination of playing one, two, three, one, two, three, one. And once you work it out here in the beginning, the next time you see this later in the piece, your hands will already know how to coordinate with each other. So a little bit of time up front will save you a lot of heartache later down the road. So this next section, we're in measure five. We're jumping from the E flat up to the A flat. Crescendoing that line into the downbeat of measure seven. That's the arrival. Take crescendoing all this. And measures five through six are just quarter notes, right? So every right hand note is playing in conjunction with the left hand. In measure seven, we have that same half note quarter note feel, one, three, one, that we had earlier. And then quarter notes, right hand with every left hand. Now, if you're just getting started with four mouths, or maybe you've been playing for a while and you have some technical things that you're working out, a few quick notes. In your left hand, keep trying to use the wrist motion to motivate the mallet. And with these single independents, you're really rotating around this mallet four. So you'll notice that the same comment from before, don't move your entire arm as you're trying to play this melody. Try to keep the motion here in mallet three as we're rotating. And you see that mallet four, this mallet here, Mallet four is trying to stay as stable as possible as we're coming through. Mallet four is going to move a little bit, but try to keep most of the motion in mallet three as the single independent. Now, you don't have to do the same phrasing that I'm doing up for forward, down for forward. That's just one example. That's the one that I chose to do in this performance video. You can phrase it however you like. The key is you have to be clear with your phrasing. If someone was transcribing what you were playing, they would say, oh, they're crescendoing here, they're decrescendoing here. That's the arrival point. Now they're moving away. You're always going somewhere or coming from somewhere. Just make sure that your musical phrasing is clear, whatever it is that you decide to do. The last two musical things I'll mention is this whole opening section is under the umbrella of piano, right? So I'm exaggerating the crescendos and the decrescendos right now just so you can see what we're doing, but you have to keep everything kind of under this piano umbrella. So it's very subtle, the phrasing. So I'm thinking maybe piano plus or mezzo piano minus for the peak of the phrase, and then I'm coming back down so that as we crescendo out of this section, is there a dynamic marking for this? We're keeping everything down at the piano range so that our left hand has room to crescendo in measures 10 and 11 into the mezzo forte. Carefully, you don't crescendo too quickly or get too loud. Keep it under piano. Most commonly, students just play their pianos too loud. So think about finesse, bring the stick heights down just a little bit, keep it under piano so that you have more dynamic range later to explore. Measure 10 and 11, this takes us into the next section. Decrescendo the right hand. Crescendo the left hand to carry the momentum. So there's a little bit of this, you know, um, dolphins, right? They're overlapping a little bit. As the right hand's coming down, the left hand is coming up. So you want those two phrases to be interweaved. It's almost as if there's two people playing, ships passing the night, right hand comes down, left hand comes up and carries us into the next section. This is not super obvious, but before you start this piece, make sure you breathe. You'll see vocalists breathing, woodwind brass players certainly breathe, but the same thing for string players and percussionists. We breathe before we start in the style, in the feel, in the pulse of the piece before we start playing to convey some musical life into the piece. We're gonna breathe and prepare the mallet before we start playing, as opposed to just starting cold. Conductors obviously think about this a lot, but the way we prepare this first note is gonna convey a lot about the style and sound. So in my head, I'm gonna prep and breathe on the third beat of the pulse before I start playing. Um, a performance tip is to hear the sound that you're about to make before you start playing, so that it's not a surprise or a shock to you when you start to make sound. In my head, I already hear, dum bum bum, dum bum bum. I can hear the piece in my head, that little, and then I count myself in. One, two, three, one, two. And no 
notice that I'm breathing through my nose, I'm preparing with my left hand. Those are all the little things that many young players either don't know about or they haven't incorporated into their performance and their style. But these are all very common things that you'll see in a mature player. Okay, let's run all the way through. We're gonna do it once with the metronome, once without the metronome. We're gonna do a little bit under. We're gonna do it at 120. Um, for those of us who might still be learning it, if it's too fast, just slow it down a little bit, but we'll do it uh, with the Met the first time through. Okay, this is 120. Feel the pulse before you start. Hear the sound in your head. You're gonna count yourself in, and then make sure you breathe and prepare before you start playing. One, two, three, one, two. You can take a little bit of time going into that phrase. For me, because we just spent the first 10, 11 measures building the momentum, I'm carrying that momentum through into measure 12, and then we're gonna take a little bit of time later in the piece. So again, all these musical choices that you're making in the beginning, those are your choices. You get to make a decision based off of your musical experience. There isn't necessarily a right or wrong way to do it. Whatever you're doing, just make sure that you're clear about it and that it makes musical sense. Okay, let's try the same thing now without the metronome checking the pulse, see how many of those things that we talked about earlier you can incorporate into the opening. One, two, three, one, two. Question of the video, what are some of the musical or technical challenges that you might be experiencing as a young player or maybe you're a teacher working with a player? What is that challenge and what recommendations do you have for this opening section? Leave us a comment down below. We'd love to hear from you. Subscribe for more videos like this and thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. All right, how did you do?